Hey everyone, today we're doing another species spotlight on what is very quickly growing to be one of my favorite species, the northern pine snake or the Pichuophis melanoleucus. At least I think that's how you pronounce it, melanoleucus. So these guys are absolutely amazing and beautiful little animals. I say little, they're actually a pretty substantial size colubrid snake. So Pichuophis, that's that genus, that's the pine snakes, bull snakes, gopher snakes, those type of animals, those kind of very iconic North American colubrids, pretty heavy bodied, larger snakes, non-venomous, almost a, they're a constrictor type snake, not a boid like a boa or a python, but they do use constriction as well as just kind of their weight and force because these guys are pretty powerful animals. So I said the Pichuophis, the Melanoleucus is Latin. The Melana means dark or black. And then the Lucus, as in like with leucism, leucistic white animals means light or dark. And as you can very clearly see on Shoshone here, our adult female northern, that means basically black and white snake. So these guys are endemic to North America, the East Coast. Uh, so endemic means that's where they're naturally found, usually fairly isolated through geography. These guys, there are three different subspecies, um, the northerns, the blacks, and then the southern or Florida pine snakes. Um, I have, I do not have a black pine snake. Um, I do have a male pink leucistic theme, uh, male pink leucistic Southern, as well as we have, uh, this girl's boyfriend who's growing up Apache, as well as we just picked up another female to essentially make a trio. She does not have a name yet and we'll bring out Apache because the female is still in quarantine in just a second. So as I said, they were found in the East coast. So originally the northern, at least the subspecies of northern, so this is the Pichuophis melanoleucus, 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 so kind of like boa constrictor, constrictor, that basically with these guys. These guys have a very extensive range. They range from uh, down in the southern, actually like, you know, the south that you think of, Kentucky, North, South Carolina, all the way up into New Jersey is their historical range. Um, there are several different localities. So specific looks to them, depending on where they are. The typical look that has become very popular is the black and white. And as a whole, and I am still learning about these guys, so I will do my best to give the, if, what are you doing, Shoshone? She's so silly. Um, generally the very black and white, high contrast animals that usually come from New Jersey and the Pine Barrens, and usually the Ocean County locale is usually the most, I'm going to keep saying usually, I'm sorry, is the most drastic black and white contrast. Um, they also have different tones, as you can kind of see in this. So there's tones of kind of a brown, red, tan, and milkish yellow. Um, and then depending on localities, uh, they can be almost red, like a pinkish red with light instead of the white and black. And then in Kentucky, specifically, there is a locality that they are just straight calling the Kentucky Northern or the Kentucky Pine Snake, which is yellow, like bumblebee black and yellow instead of this white color. And I don't know what she is getting up to. It feels like she's messing with my hair a little bit. Um, these guys are absolutely amazing animals. They, as I said before, they're very heavy bodied. They're very large. These, girl, these guys and gals, this is one of the species of snakes where the male can actually attain larger sizes. Um, these guys can achieve over seven feet in length. And I don't know where she is going. What are you doing? And we're back. So they are fairly arboreal despite being fairly fossorial. So arboreal, climbing up in the trees, doing climbing like that. Fossorial means in burrows, underground, stuff like that. Um, these guys are only found, like I said, um, specifically New Jersey animals in the Pine Barrens, which are becoming drastically uh, smaller. There's a lot of habitat deforestation and uh, loss, as well as, what are you, you are just the, you are just going nuts today. That's okay. I love it. I love, I love these guys so much. I love when they just sit there and cruise like this. I'm not joking. I love, what, what, what's up? So I'm going to, I don't know if you heard, I don't know if that picked up or not just with the microphone. I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, they typically, they're called pine snakes, gopher snakes, bull snakes, because they usually use the litter of those pine trees and those pine forests as habitat, as well as a food source 
for a lot of their things. So, you know, specifically with like gopher snakes, they get their name because they live in gopher burrows, they eat the gophers. Same with these guys um, down in with Louisiana pine snakes, which is a different species altogether. We'll do a whole other video about them. Um, and like the southern pine snakes, they use the, the gopher tortoise burrows. They will uh, inhabit those as well as using that as places to look for food and prey. So, as I said just a second ago, she made kind of like this low hissing sound. So, as everyone knows, snakes hiss. And some snakes are more well known for it than others. I'm going to try to keep her in frame here. So, we all know like the boa constrictor. That is a very iconic, loud hiss. Like, like very intimidating, right? Leave me alone. These guys make sounds that are so loud you wouldn't believe it comes from an animal this size. So that hiss by made by all the different snakes that hiss is made by an, a modified epiglottis. And so that is basically the little, like, so the glottis is the little hole in a snake's mouth that they use to breathe when eating. It's a modified epiglottis where it can produce sound and blow and move air past it in a certain way to make a very loud, intimidating, and I'm going to be honest with you, there were a couple times when she was still in quarantine where I lifted up the top of a tub and it was scary. She's never took a pop at me, but she was just loud, leave me alone, so hiss, so loud. It is crazy. Um... Which brings me to the next point about these guys. Really, all of the pits or the Pituophis genus are known to be a little bit, they're known to have a bit of an attitude. Um, and these are no exception. She absolutely, as I just said, has let me know when she does not want to be messed with. Other times, clearly, she is just fine. Um, absolutely fine, as you can see, very calm very personal, mellow snake under more circumstances, except for when she does not want to be messed with at all. There's a weird thing about these guys, specifically with the Pituophis, um, with the with the Pituophis melanoleucus specifically, as well as the Ruthveni, and a couple other like Mexican pine snakes that are different species. Um, it seems like the further north you get, the more mellow they are. So the, the northerns here, and actually I'm gonna put her away, and I'm gonna bring on Apache so you can see the other one here in just a sec, so we'll be right back. Okay, so here's Apache. This is Shoshone's boyfriend. We picked him up from a local breeder here in town. We know exactly what county he's from. We know his whole lineage, which is super cool because Shoshone is a bit of an unknown. We picked her up from somebody who was just downsizing their collection um, based on a couple other breeders. They're pretty sure she's an Ocean County or at least New Jersey locality. Very white, really pretty snake, but Apache. So, as I was saying before, with Shoshone out, um, you know, that attitude, which he has not shown at all. I fully know what he does. They have a great prey drive, very quick to fly and get that prey item. But absolutely, you know, I'm, I don't like to use the, the phrase dog tame, but I love this little boy. He has a great personality, so personable. He's such a beautiful snake, and those awesome whites and he has a little bit of like a rose flush to a lot of his scales which i don't know if he's going to keep um he may get even whiter as he gets older like his dad but this attitude which the northerns for the most part have very similar to like bull snakes where yeah they can throw attitude but they don't really bite they don't really flare up a whole lot and they're kind of they can be kind of huffy and hissy but once they're up they're usually pretty good and then as you move down so the northerns for them a lot of their range is a little bit further north and then you move down to the black pine snake which by the way every single one of the three subspecies are protected in some way shape or form depending on the subspecies so northern pine snakes depending on where you are are protected on a state level so either you have to have them you have to have a permit um, or you can't have them at all the black pine snakes are federally protected they're an endangered species um, if you possess them, which is most of the time it is legal to have them, but you can't transport them out of state without an interstate commerce license, which is fairly easy to obtain. It just, you know, it's a few hoops that people have to jump through to do things the right way, which please everyone do things the right way, please. Um, they have a very similar attitude, but, uh, youngsters have a tendency to be a little bit more cage huffy, a little bit more quick to kind of, ah, leave me alone. 
Um, fun fact about the Black Pines, which I don't have one, so I'll do a whole story about them when I do get one eventually. Um, they are born not solid black, and then as they get older, they can turn very close to jet black. There's usually some coloration on the underbelly, chin, even some light banding towards the tail. And then you get down into the southern or Florida pine snakes, so, you know, down Georgia, South Carolina, the tips, and down into Florida, the southern or Florida pine snake for that name, right? They typically have the worst attitudes. My boy is pretty good for the most part. He loves to rattle his tail, loves to rattle his tail, pretty jumpy, but he's not really hissy or poppy. But I've seen a few, worked with a couple that absolutely hold up to that reputation as being more huffy. Though, to be completely honest, you know, once you get really into snakes and, you know, balls, corns, kings, they're really great animals to get into it. But once you really start getting into the different herpetiles and starting to appreciate the species for what they are more, these guys, this is why they're one of my favorite snakes, is their personalities and attitude and traits are just so cool and they're so different, like, they're, that's, they're almost more individuals than other snakes um, because of those things where they're all different. Like I said, this guy, he's a youngster, had zero problems whatsoever. Shoshone, an adult, was taken as an adult from someone who wasn't taking care of them, and then I picked her up. Huffy, hissy at times, but still very handleable. His girl, the, his future girlfriend, the other part of the trio, she's a youngster, uh... Yes, uh, and she is even more huffy. She doesn't hiss and puff, but she'll like sit there and strike at a prey item instead of just grabbing it and taking it. Um, so she's still not great with a lot of new things. Um, and then with the Louisiana pine snakes, once again, I'll do that whole thing. Uh, they can be good. Our girl is very hissy, very rattly, very jumpy, but usually good once out. The boyfriend that we picked up this year, not so much. We're still working on him, but that's okay. Once again, that's why I like him. So these guys, super cool. I know I got more into their personality, but these guys have keeled scales, which means they're not smooth and soft like a boas or a pythons. These guys' scales are closer to like a rattlesnake or obviously a bull snake, you know, same genus and such, where they are rough scales. They are more conical in shape. They even have a little ridge. Um, that probably helps with defense. Um, I wish I knew offhand the reason why they are keeled versus other ones. Um, that is mostly because of where they are. It's kind of like corn snakes are a little hybrid of the two. It's probably just how fossorial they are, the climate they live in. It's not uh, tropical like boas and ball pythons and other pythons like that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I absolutely love these colubrid snakes. Northern pine snakes might be one of my new favorite species. Certainly a favorite right now to work with, just sitting there watching their behavior. Uh, Shoshone, like for instance, I put her in a larger tub. Uh, I have four foot long tubs, and I put her in one of those for quarantine, and she hated it. She went off food. I put her back into a 36 inch, so a foot shorter, but a slightly taller exoterra went just fine. Completely destroyed the cage, ripped her styrofoam background down, threw it up, made a bunch of burrows under the aspen, flipped over her water bowl. I don't know if she's a snake or if she's a teenage girl, but just really fun. I still love her to death. I think it's hilarious. This guy doing just fine. Um, he moved to a 32 quart rack downstairs in the main snake room and he's doing just great absolutely no problems and I look forward to in the next couple years once he gets a little bit older although he actually shares my birthday which is super cool uh maybe producing some northern pine snakes fingers crossed hopefully you guys enjoyed this video please like and subscribe if you can if you have any questions let me know if I misspoke at all specifically about these guys because I am still learning I just was super excited to share these with you guys let me know down in the comments um have any other questions, jay reptiles gmail.com. Questions about merchandise, and my awesome little shirt here, I super love. Um, hope I don't know when this video is going to come out. I don't have a whole lot of time these days, so whenever I get a chance, I'll just kind of shotgun four or five videos in a day if I can. So if this is out before the holidays, hopefully I'll have a lot of sizes and colors, men's, unisex, women's, um, even a few youth sizes. Um, so just email me, jay -Z's -reptiles .com. Um, uh, Follow for more info more reptile-related videos, 
Instagram pictures, Facebook, random updates. If you can, support us on Patreon. Super cool, a couple different levels, giving my shot at it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you have a great day, and we'll check you next time.